Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here, welcome to the channel, and look, we're doing some polyphia today, which we all know what that means. It means I'm going to take my ego out and leave it at the door <laughs> so it doesn't get stomped on. Um, look, we all know these guys are amazing players. This is a pretty new song, so it's going to be interesting to see with which direction this goes in. They, they, you know, they typically have a flavor, but there's always some sort of different element that, that keeps them interesting. Every time a new song comes out, you listen to it and you go, oh, okay, this is an interesting direction for them. So that's what I'm hoping to see today, something a little bit different. Um, I've got no context for this one, although I do know that Tim Henson's come out with a playthrough now, uh, basically saying, look, you know, this is legitimately how I play it. And that's um, that's kind of cool, you know, letting everybody know that, it, that it, all of it is legit. Um, but yeah, I've got no context or anything like that. All I'm really looking to see on this one is just, just what, what always comes with Polyphia. Great sounding mix, uh, amazing playing from all instruments, the ability to, for everybody to have their little moment in the sun is always great as well. So, you know, let's jump right in. Playing God, Polyphia. A nylon string. I think that's a nylon string. Wow. Okay. Love those little dramatic stops, right? Bop, bop. Come on, Scott. The drums sound so dead in such a great way. Oh, listen to Clay, man, on drum on the bass. Nice. Harmonize parts. Oh, oh, I'm in Rio all of a sudden. <laughs> It sounds like a reharmonization of Girl from Ipanema. Um, yeah, if, yeah, everyone knows that song. <laughs> it's just like that last part. It, it, it's interesting because they've got sort of like a little bit of a South American flavor with, first of all, having the nylon string guitars. Um, but then they sort of go into this. It's not, it's not a Bossa Nova groove, but it's a Bossa Nova flavor, if that makes any sense. All of a sudden, I'm in Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, and I'm like, you know, by the beach. So it's, it seems like a logical place to go to have Girlfriend Panema sort of elements in there. They're not, they're not copying the melody or doing anything like that, but you could almost sing the melody over the top of it, which is kind of a bit cheeky. I really, <laughs> I really like that. Hang on, let's go back and listen to that part again, because that's mind-blowing. I love it. He's just doing like... It's already Latin American flavor. Man, the fact that they're, they're doing this on... I'm really interested to, to see how these guitars play um, because obviously they must have great action, but the interesting thing about nylon strings is they have so much... You can, you can see the string, right? Like there's so much movement in these strings. Um, 
it's 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 sometimes it's a little bit hard to play without accidentally bending the notes unless your technique is really good which i mean these guys have great technique but also um the string has to have a certain amount of space to oscillate right so the action isn't typically as low as it would be on on like an one of the electric guitars that they're playing but but i guess as a consequence also the strong the strings tend to be lower tension so they they can be a little bit easier to, to push down so you can play with a lighter touch i guess it's it's just interesting i just love that Man, I haven't pulled out that guitar in a really long time. Look, proof. Look at the dust on it. <laughs> Thank you, Polyphia, for getting me to pull out my guitar again. That's awesome. I haven't... Man. Okay. Here we go. Jumping back in. noticed it seems like what a lot a lot of what they do is a lot of times when you when you're coming up with a melody you'll have these amazingly articulated main parts with little bits and pieces to tie them together it seems like what polyphia does is they'll have a strong melodic moment which will be simplistic tied together by really complicated articulated parts so you'll have like this really strong da -da 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 you know what I mean? So rather than having a melody that's really hard to cope with, you've got this simple melody that goes through da 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 or something like that. But in between those moments is just just brutal guitar playing. Just I think I've unlocked the secret. I think that's what it is. Listen to this part again. Okay, and then they go and do this sort of thing, but but again, that's not overly complicated. It's just um, it's obviously set to a groove, but a lot of the work there's being done by a delay, by the sound of it. So. Melody, and then the bridging part. Yeah, so they've got a delay on being like a kind of tempo. And so you get this, you play one note and you get like five notes. And so then when you start moving that around the fretboard, you get these sort of moments that sound really impressive. And they are, not to take away how impressive the playing is, but when you add that layer of delay in there, it just, it's a cacophony for your ears. It's really interesting. See if you can hear the other parts. Can they at least make it look like they're putting some effort in to play this stuff? It's like, this is the effect this video clip has. It's like, it's like, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, no, this is like, this took zero effort on our part. Um, if you're gonna learn it, it's gonna take you eight to 10 months of solid wall-to-wall -wall practice. 
I love it. I love the audacity of it. It's brilliant. Um, but you know what? That's part of the charm and it's part of the technique of, of Tim and, and Scott is that um, less is more as far as the lateral movement of your fingers and, you know, like their, their action, their playing action is super light touch, minimal effort. Um, and that's, that's what allows them to get the speed that they get and the, and the articulation and the, the accuracy. It all comes from that sort of light touch. It's that, you know, if you're, if you're coming up to a part in a song that you know is a hard part of a guitar solo or whatever, the natural instinct of a guitar player is to, is to tense up and get, and that's, that's not a great place to be when you're trying to move fluidly and quickly. You want to be loose and comfortable. And so, you know, the best way to, to play a song like this is literally as comfortable as you can be, you know? Um, so I guess what they're doing is they're secretly giving you a tip there that you may not have picked up on. And that is relax. You'll get it. You know, um, it becomes muscle memory rather than active focus, you know, if you practice enough and that's, that's, what's interesting about them. Anyway, stay around, hang around after the uh, break and I'll give you my final thoughts. Hey guys, this video is made possible by Enchroma. One in six guys and one in 200 women are colorblind. And if that happens to be you, there's something you can do about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Enchroma's website where you can get a free eye test. And while you're there, maybe pick up some corrective lenses. They've got styles to suit everybody and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you got really nothing to lose. And while you're there, use the code chaos in checkout to get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you. All right, so man, yet another performance by these guys that's just just boggles the mind it just doesn't make a lot of sense you know um but the fact that they're doing it on nylon strings to me seems a little bit like a flex you know it's like yeah we, we can do it on you know perfectly sort of set up electric guitars and you know even acoustic guitars and things like that but then when you do it with classical instruments i mean these are modernized classical instruments but you know, at the end of the day, the fundamentals of a nylon string doesn't change. They don't have, um, they don't have particularly great sustain, you know, um, they're pretty unforgiving, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong. This is, this isn't a very good, a very quality instrument. Um, I've played, uh, Luthier made like classical guitars, which would make your heart break, right? They're so amazingly resonant and sustaining and things like that um these these are also old strings you know but i mean fundamentally the concept of of a lot of um classical music on guitar is keeping keeping things going so that there's never dead air because you know if you hold a note it doesn't sustain for very long you know and that's that's part of the reason why a lot of this is more percussive than anything because they're getting the attack of the note but um hang on you know uh, you get a lot of that attack in there but you're not sort of having to um rely on the notes ringing out you know so much and uh yeah no, i find it really interesting how they've sort of written around the instrument as well like it doesn't seem like they they sort of wrote these on a standard sort of steel string acoustic right like you can already see the brightness of this guitar and the sustain is much more dramatic and so you you can sort of take your time and leave leave gaps in there and it still sounds impressive it doesn't sort of go boom and fall off um you know so um yeah so i'd say what's probably happened is they've managed to get their hands on these guitars from ibanez and they've gone what can we do with these and they've come up with the world's best advertising campaign i wasn't aware that ibanez made electric nylon strings and now I know. <laughs> so congratulations, Ibanez, you nailed it. Um, look, this was phenomenal, as always. Everybody played their part beautifully. Not enough is said about Clay on bass. Um, one thing I did notice through in this playthrough, I was trying to sort of focus on everybody, everybody else because it's real easy to focus on Tim. And look, not enough is said about Scott 
he's phenomenal as well. He keeps up with Tim just as, as much, you know. Um, and and so I feel like it's it's a remiss of me to not mention him um, and his playing as much as, as, as Tim because they're both phenomenal players. They're both amazing at what they do. So, you know, that's that aside, I, I want to talk a little bit about Clay Gober on base. He's, if you listen through, the thing that's most impressive about what he does is um, he, he sort of ability to, to, I'm trying to think of the best way to articulate it, but essentially the long way of saying it would be um, his, his notes last exactly the right amount of time and they're only there for as long as they need to be. And you can hear that because he'll he'll hold these notes like do ba 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 ba, you know. There's never he's not lazy at all. And you know, with with bass, it can be real easy to sort of just chug away in the background and, and play. But he's um he is as accurate and articulate as as both um, Tim and Scott are in that he's only putting notes in exactly where they need to be for as long as they need to be there. Um, his bass sound is beautiful as well. He's got just about the right amount of attack um, without it. You know, it still sounds like a bass. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I appreciate that. And he's definitely, he's definitely, he knows his place in the band and, and, and the overall frequency response of the sound of the song. He knows exactly where to fill the gaps, you know? Um, and also the dynamics as well. Plus, he's an amazing articulate player as well. Like when you when you get to see him solo and f- flex a little bit more, you you notice um, just how amazing he is. But in the background is where I find him most impressive when he's sort of supporting everybody else. And of course, Clay on drums is just a phenom as well. Like it seems to me like what's happening is that the rhythms are programmed potentially. I know that Tim likes to write like that. He'll, he'll program essentially an EDM song and then he'll learn how to play it whenever, you know, gets programmed in. And that's how come his guitar is always so fresh and interesting, right? Is because it's not written from the mindset of a guitar player as, as much. Um, and I would wonder if maybe the tracks in some sort of raw form get sent over to Clay on drums and he sort of learns the parts and maybe embellishes them and comes up with some bits and pieces for himself. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that was how essentially the, the process functionally works. Um, these days, rather than everybody getting into a room and just hashing out songs, most of the time artists, because everyone has a project studio, um, you know, they'll, they'll write an entire song because you can't really come up with those guitar parts without a drum rhythm, right? So then you'll send it to the drummer, the drummer will go, okay, and he'll sort of figure it out and go, yeah, okay, that's playable, or if not, I might change this or whatever, and then send it back, and then they'll record the entire song as a band later on, right? But as far as the writing process goes, it's kind of like sending digital sketches back and forth until they've hashed out everything that needs to be hashed out. Um, And so that, again, it's kind of why there's such like a a lo-fi hip-hop sort of vibe to the drumming, I guess. Um, there seems to be sort of like a flavor there that's got like a an energy um, that just feels like sampled drums, even though they're not, you know, there's something to it that just sort of, it's esoteric enough that it sounds like it's been pulled from a bunch of different sources, you know? Um, and I just find that infinitely interesting as well. Um, but anyway, look, this was an amazing track. Um, I'm glad they brought it out. I may even do the um, acoustic Tim Henson version uh, and see how that goes as well. But man, this was really cool. Um, anyway, if you feel like I've brightened your day at all, feel free to support the channel just by buying me a coffee. Um, I really appreciate that. It goes a long way to helping support the channel. And, uh, you know, send this to anyone else who might appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. Um, I love you guys. And if you could uh, maybe point me in the direction of some other polyphia I haven't done, maybe some older stuff that's impressive. Um, because I've only sort of been around since I guess Goat came out. Um, and I've only listened to a couple of songs because I've been saving them up for reactions just like this. So let me know what you want to hear and, uh, I'll jump on it, but thanks again, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.